Everything begins on May 29th in the city of Fujisawa with the protagonist of this anime named Sakura Azuzagawa, who wakes up with the memory of a young girl asking him for a kiss, but he doesn't know who she is. Upon getting up, he notices that there is a diary on his desk that he himself has written, with a message telling him to read it to the end or else he won't believe it. The date of the beginning of this story is also written, May 6th, followed by I met a wild bunny girl, but for some reason, the girl's name is not mentioned. Going back in time when Sakuta is in the library, he sees a girl dressed as a bunny pass by. Following her, he notices that she is trying to get people's attention, but no one can see her except him. When the girl decides to leave, he stops her to introduce himself and asks if she is the famous Mei Sakurajima, but she simply asks him to forget what he has seen and leaves. On the way to school, the young man and his friend, Yuma Kunimi, encounter Mei, and due to what happened in the library, he asks her if he can see her too. She responds affirmatively, and they talk about how, despite leaving her job, she is still a celebrity but always lonely because no one wants to approach her to avoid standing out in high school. After classes at the train station, the boy notices a couple trying to take a photo of Mei upon recognizing her. He intervenes, accusing them of and Mei thanks him. They travel together on the train, where she tells him that she has seen rumors about him on social media saying that he sent four boys to the hospital. He confesses that he is not aware of the rumors because he does not have a cell phone and despite the rumors not being true, he does not intend to contradict them as he needs to adapt to the atmosphere. Changing the subject, he asks the girl about what happened in the library days before and she tells him the story of how, at the age of six, her life as a celebrity began. Over time, she started wishing that no one knew her. Later. While visiting an aquarium outside Fujisawa, she noticed that people there could not see her. However, everything returned to normal upon returning and to test if this happens in other places, she dresses as a bunny girl to attract attention. She believes it's her imagination, but the young man explains that her problem might be the puberty syndrome, and invites her to his apartment to make her believe. In his home, he shows her scratches on his that simply appeared one day. He also shows a photo of his sister, Ki, with bruises that started after she received on social media. When she distanced herself from social media, her wounds healed but it caused her to become shy, have difficulty communicating with people, and not want to go outside. The young man witnessing this also decided to distance himself from social media and get rid of his phone. Having experienced all of this, Sakuta asks her to return to the world of entertainment so that people don't ignore her and she won't be forgotten, but she gets upset and leaves. At the restaurant where Sakuna works, a journalist named Fumika Nanjo appears, interested in the puberty syndrome story. She asks for photos of his injuries, but he requests information about Mai in return, so that they make a deal. After leaving his job, he heads to his apartment and finds the girl outside who asks for help because more people can't see her. That same night, while both are in a supermarket shopping, they realize that no one can still see the young girl. Later, the boy decides to accompany Mei to her home and tells her that he found out why she decided to leave television. The reason was a disagreement with this job that her mother accepted against her will. To get back at her mother, Mei abandoned her as she was being used to make money. Upon hearing this, Mei gets upset, leading to an argument, and she slaps the boy. Sakuta tells her that he got the information from the journalist who visited him at work, and in exchange, he allowed her to take photos of his injuries. Upon learning this, Mei responds that what he did will make everyone aware of him, and journalists will take the opportunity to ask him and his sister, so they won't be safe. Immediately, Mei calls the journalist Funika to make a deal and not publish the photos of the young man. Before reaching Mei's house, she confirms that he wants to return to television and asks him to accompany her the next day. The next morning, Sakuta is excited about the meeting and prepares as if he were going on a date. Leaving his apartment, he sees a lost crying girl in the park and decides to help. However, he hears a scream and suddenly receives a blow from a girl who accuses him of being a predator. When she realizes she misunderstood the situation, she apologizes and asks him to return the kick. Unaware that a police officer is watching them, they are asked to accompany him to the police station. After realizing the time he lost and that he had a date with May, he leaves. Upon arriving at the train station, he didn't find her, but she waited for him despite being an hour late. On the train, she asks him why he helps her given that she's a complicated person. He responds that it's the only opportunity to be with a cute girl. But the real reason is that he knows the feeling of being alone and unable to count on anyone when facing problems. He experienced it when his sister became involved in rumors on social media, leading to puberty syndrome. At that time, only one person helped him, a girl he met at the beach, Shoko Makinohara, who he never saw again, but always wanted to. Arriving at the beach, they see a car and a lady, May's mother, gets out. Mai asked her to come to tell her that she decided to return to the entertainment world. However, they realize that she can't see Mai either. The mother, angry for wasting her time, asks the young man if he sent her a message inviting her, to which he responds that he is her daughter's classmate, and she was the one who sent the message. The lady, upset, says she has no daughter, showing the received message without the sender's name, and then leaves. They realize that not only are the fans forgetting her, but also her mother, so they decide to talk to the journalist. 
However, she claims not to know the young girl and denies the deal she made with him the previous night. Hearing this and feeling down, Mei decides to leave, but Sakuta stops her, convincing her that they can go to other cities to find out if someone remembers her, to which she agrees. In another city with no answers, they head to the hotel. While she takes a shower, he decides to call his classmates who still remember her. In the call with his friend Ryo Futaba, she suggests that the problem might be at school, so they should return. At the end of the day, both share the bed, and during the conversation, Mei asks him to kiss her. In a way, he rejects her, and she turns around, asking what you would do if she confessed that she is scared and doesn't want to disappear. He responds that you would simply embrace her and tell her that everything will be okay. The next day, the young people return to school, but just like in the city, students cannot see or remember Mei. While the girl heads to her classroom, Sukuta meets his friend Ryo, whom we spoke to the night before. He explains that perhaps this is because the atmosphere of ignorance is starting to spread. Mei was always like a ghost in the school, and when people fall asleep, they begin to lose memories of Mai, eventually forgetting her existence. That same night, Sakuta decides not to sleep to avoid forgetting the girl. He uses final exams as an excuse. It's at this moment that he decides to write a diary about how he met Mai in case he forgets her. The next morning during class, the young man goes to talk to Ryo, but she no longer remembers Mei. This confirms his theory, and he resolves to make his best effort not to fall asleep and forget her. He manages to last for about two days until Mei realizes what he's doing. She tricks him by saying she will help him study for the final exam. In the young man's apartment, while she helps him study, she puts sleeping in his glass so that he can finally rest. Before he falls asleep, she says goodbye, thanking him for everything and assuring him not to worry, as she will be fine. Upon waking up, it's May 29th, the day he finds the diary on his desk. As he begins to read, he sees that it's written by him, but he doesn't remember writing it. He also notices that the girl's name he narrates is not mentioned on any page, so he doesn't pay much attention and leaves the diary. At school, his friend hands the young man a note she found for him in a book. The note mentions that students unconsciously ignore someone, leading to their disappearance. However, something strong, like love, can make them remember and overcome the unconsciousness of others. During the exam, he suddenly starts having memories of the night before while studying with someone and memories of the past few days until he remembers May. Suddenly, he gets up and rushes out of the classroom to the schoolyard, shouting to everyone that he loves May Sakurajima, trying to make everyone remember her. At that moment, the girl appears behind him, telling him that it's not necessary to shout. However, thanks to that declaration, students start talking about the two, resolving the problem of the puberty syndrome that the girl was facing. It's a new day, and Sakuta, about to go to school, sees his sister, Keed, watching the news. It's June 27th, and Japan became champion. Almost a month has passed since that time. Entering class, the boy has a conversation with his classmates. After class, he meets Mei for lunch, taking the opportunity to ask her to be his girlfriend. She initially refuses, but he cunningly claims to have lost interest after trying for a month. Upon hearing this, she reluctantly agrees. Happy with Mei's response, he goes to class, but on the stairs, he encounters a boy confessing to a student, Tomokoga, the girl who came in the park. She seems nervous, but he ignores her and leaves. The next morning, excited about his new girlfriend, the young man sees his sister watching the news again. It's June 27th, and Japan became champion. Despite being confused because he had already heard this news, he goes to class. There, he realizes that he has the same conversations with his classmates and the same classes as the day before. He also notices that Mei never accepted being his girlfriend. During lunch, he asks her again, and she reluctantly agrees once more. After finishing lunch, he crosses paths with a couple from the stairs, paying no attention and walking away. The next day, it's June 27th again. Seeing that the days are not progressing, he consults his friend Ryo. She suggests it could be due to the supposed Laplace's demon, a demon that can predict the future and causes the day to repeat. To end this, he must find the person causing it, someone who acts differently on the repeated days. Thinking it will take time, he finds the person responsible, Koba. He decides to help her so that the days can move forward again. However, as she tries to hide from the boy confessing to her, she falls on Sakuta. The other boy witnesses this, and feeling awkward, refrains from making his love confession. On the other side, Mei appears, sees them in that awkward situation, and Sakuta tries to explain what he saw, but she leaves without wanting to listen. Thinking that the day will repeat so he can fix things, he wakes up surprised to realize that the day has passed because the boy from the stairs couldn't make his confession. That same night, while the young man is working, Koga appears and it seems they will start working together. After work, she asks him to pretend to be a couple because she's afraid of losing friends if the boy confesses to her, as her friend is in love with him. Sakuta, remembering his sister's similar experience, decides to accept and help her for the rest of the semester. Upon returning home after a long day, the protagonist is surprised to see Mei, who seeks him out to ask why he didn't give her an explanation of what he saw. After the incident, Mei and Sakuta find themselves in the room where he explains that it was all a misunderstanding. However, he decided to help Koga because it reminded him of his sister and her fear of feeling alone and embarrassed. Mei believes in the young man's words but conditions him to prove loyalty. Without thinking, the boy approaches her with other intentions, ending with a simple hit from her. 
At that moment, he mentions that he will have to leave for a week for work reasons. He also brings a gift for Keed, encouraging her to gradually overcome shyness and eventually venture into the outside world. Kade, very pleased, expresses her gratitude. The next day before work, a young man has a conversation with his classmate and learns that the boy who was going to confess to Tomo is named Mezawa and already has a girlfriend. In the afternoon of the following day, Sakuda has a date with his fake girlfriend at the aquarium. She wants to prove to her friends that they are in a relationship and asks him to take some photos as evidence for her friends. During the date, she tells him that she is from a small town and had a hard time adapting to the city. She had to change not only her appearance but also her personality. Before leaving, they see one of her classmates who seems worried because she has lost a necklace. They help her find it, and the girl realizes that the young man is not as the rumors suggest. At work, she asks him if he has already asked Mei to be his girlfriend. He responds that he hasn't because, due to a misunderstanding and being stuck in time, he didn't have the chance to confess. If all this had not happened, they would already be a couple. During class, Sakuda meets his friend Ryo, who tells him that the days have been repeating because the girl couldn't find a future she liked, causing her to relive the same day until she found one. After finding it, she lets the days pass normally, even though she may not know what Laplace's demon is or is pretending not to know. That night after work, the young man tells his friend Kimnimi that his girlfriend has once again asked him to stay away from her. However, Kimnimi informs him of rumors about Koga, involving the protagonist as well. The next day at the train station, the young man sees Tomo Dup Approaching her, Meizawa appears and Sakuda decides to confront him as he seems to be one of those spreading false rumors and harassing her. Sakuda teaches him a lesson by hitting him shouting in front of everyone that the rumors are not true. He then grabs his friend and they run away, preventing the day from repeating. The next day after what happened at the station, as Sakuta heads to class, he observes the students around him talking about him and what he said the previous day. When he arrives at school, he sees Koga with her friends and he is happy, so the rest doesn't matter. Back at home, Mei and Sakuta discuss their future. She encourages him to study so they can go to university together. To motivate him, she wears the bunny costume and confesses that she does it to get his attention as she got a bit jealous after the disagreement with Tomo. Before Sakuta's relationship with Koga ends as the semester is finishing, they decide to have one last date, this time at the beach, and they plan to meet the next day. As the day dawns, Kib wakes up her brother, reminding him that it's the last day of classes. They have breakfast together, and after classes, Sakuta meets Tomo. During their date, they spend almost the entire day together. At sunset, they decide to say goodbye and she thanks him for everything he has done for her. She assures him not to worry because she will tell everyone that the reason for their separation is that he couldn't stop thinking about Mai even when he was with her. After that day, Sakuda wakes up as his sister goes to wake him up, using the same phrase as the day before and to his surprise, a time loop happens again. When he arrives at school, he looks for Koga, but she claims not to remember the beach date as it hasn't happened yet. Sakuda turns to his friend Ryo again who tells him that there's a difference between the two days, and it involves his relationship with Koga. Ryo suggests that Koga, not wanting to let him go, repeats the day, possibly unaware of the consequences or perhaps lying. The days repeat until the fourth day when Sakuda tells Koga that no matter how many times she tries to repeat the day, his heart belongs only to Mei Sakurajima. She tearfully admits that she knows but cannot forget him, and her feelings for him grow stronger each day. By confessing this, Sakuda thanks her because, by expressing her feelings, he knows that the days will not repeat again. The next morning, he hears on the television, it's June 27th. Sakuda is surprised because he didn't let the day pass. Instead, he went back in time to when Koga's story with him began. Going to class, unable to confess to Mei before, this time he does and she accepts again. After having lunch with her, he encounters Tomo rejecting Mezawa on the stairs, telling him that her feelings belong to a guy without a cell phone. Sakuda overhears the conversation and tells her that despite everything, they will remain good friends. In the following days, Sakuda sees how everything unfolds just as he experienced it when he was with Koga. When he talks to his classmate about why he's the only one affected by this time phenomenon, she explains that it's due to quantum entanglement. Both share information, and this entanglement started when they met at the park and kicked each other's That evening, leaving the high school with Mai in the rain, they come across a girl with an abandoned cat. Sakuda approaches her, assuring that he'll take the cat home. He invites her to visit it, providing his address, and she accepts, introducing herself as Shoko Makinohara. As he looks up, he sees the girl he met two years ago and who was his first love. After the events, Sakuda dreams about the memory of Shoko, the girl he met some time ago and hasn't heard from since. Upon waking up, she is at his home as she went to visit the abandoned cat, and he realizes that he doesn't remember her or the moment they share on the beach. So he seeks out his friend Ryo again to tell her and consult her about his distant love. However, upon seeing her, he notices that her appearance has changed. She evades the topic, asking why he called her. That's when he tells her about the girl who suddenly reappeared but whom she doesn't remember. Ryo suggests that maybe it's another person who looks like her despite having the same name and leaves without adding more. 
That same night, May surprises Sakuta at work since they couldn't see each other during that week due to her schedule. After leaving work, they head home but see Ryo entering an internet cafe. Following her, they discover that the person Sakuta encountered that afternoon was her double, and she has been taking her place, seeking refuge in that place. Due to this, Sakuta offers her accommodation in his home until she can solve her problem. May, feeling somewhat jealous, decides to go along. Back at his home while his friend takes a bath, Sakuta tells May that it's possible there are two Rios, but he doesn't know the reason for this. The next morning, Sakuta encounters Rio's double at school, who watches his friend Kunimi from a distance while telling Sakuta how she fell in love with him. Sakuta calls his residence and May answers, confirming that Rio was in two different places at the same time, indicating the existence of two versions of her. May also mentions that she has spoken with her manager and wants to meet her boyfriend, so they need to talk. After hanging up the call, Kunimi's girlfriend appears and shows Sakuta a social media account with some of photos, realizing that those photos belong to Rio. After what the protagonist had witnessed, he returns home to talk to Rio. She explains that she created that account but didn't know what to post. Seeking attention, she started posting those photos and from there, two personalities of herself emerged, one seeking attention from people and another that doesn't accept the use of her body. After the conversation, May tells Sakuta that her agency prohibits her from having a partner. Due to this, they decide to separate for a while since her job is important. On the train, Rio's double tells the young man to decide which one to stay with because two versions of her cannot coexist. Later, she receives a message from a to inform her school, as she wears a school uniform in the photos, if they don't meet. Due to this, she asks Sakuta to delete her account. Seeing how scared she is, he decides to accompany her home and spend the night with her. While lying down, she tells him she's afraid of losing her friends and being alone since both have partners. Upon hearing this, Sakuta calls his friend to inform him that Ryo is in trouble. Without hesitation, he quickly goes to meet her to show her that no matter what happens, their friends will always be there for her. Later, they decide to spend time together by the seashore, sharing a lovely moment as friends and playing with fireworks. Remembering the Inoshima event, Kamimi suggests watching it together. Unaware, dawn breaks and the three head home. Before leaving, Ryo asks Sakuya to take care of her double as she doesn't seem well and hands him her phone. Upon returning to his apartment, his friend receives him. He hands her the phone given by the double, and upon seeing a photo of the three together from that night, she decides to leave and hide in the school. Sakuta wakes up at night and realizes his friend isn't there, so he goes out to find her in the rain. Finding her, she tells him she's going to disappear because her double is doing things better than her. However, Sakuta disagrees, reminding her of their plan to watch the Enoshima fireworks with Kanimi and hoping she attends. Dubika's search in the rain, he f***s waking up in the hospital where Ryo is waiting to tell him she accepts the invitation, but she needs to tell her double. What she does, they automatically merge into one putting an end to their puberty syndrome. At the festival, Ryo confesses her feelings to her friend but asks him not to respond, only to go back to his girlfriend. It's September 1st, the beginning of the second semester of high school, and at school, the protagonist looks for Mai among the students but doesn't find her. On his way home, he crosses paths with her. Happy to found her, he approaches to greet her, but she doesn't recognize him and says he can't be her sister's boyfriend. Confused by her words, he sees a blonde-haired girl approaching, claiming to be Mei Sakurajima, and that she has swapped bodies with his sister, Madoka Toyohama, who was an up-and-coming idol. While talking, they decide to pretend to be each other until they find a solution. The next day, while heading to class, Mei and her sister's body asks Sakuta to investigate what happened to her sister as she ran away from home. She believes the blame lies between them and a between their mothers. When she was a child, her father remarried a woman with a daughter whom he adopted. Upon learning this, May's mother enrolled her in a theatrical agency. However, Nanoka's mother did the same with her daughter, leading to a conflict between them. Sakuta consults Ryo again about what happened to his girlfriend. She tells him that this time the puberty syndrome is due to an unstable mental state between them and the solution is for May to become a recognized idol since it's her sister's dream. While at the beach, Sakuta tries to convince Nodoka to tell her sister how she feels. Later, when they meet, she confesses that she hates her sister because since childhood, their mother has compared her to May and how she couldn't be better. May responds that she's glad to hear it because she feels the same, but it's not their fault, it's their father's. Days pass and nothing changes. Both decide to continue pretending to be each other and put their best effort into their work. When Mai visits Sakuta at work, she mentions that she's rehearsing a lot for her sister's performance, but constantly receives messages from her mother pressuring for the presentation. Meanwhile, Madoka can't complete the recording of a Mei commercial because, feeling pressured to be her perfect sister, she suffered hyperventilation during the shoot. This news reaches Mai, and before leaving, she asks Sakuta to take care of her. For this reason, she leaves the keys to her house with the condition not to open the cabinet in her living room. While there, as Nodoka takes a bath, Sakuta opens the cabinet that his girlfriend prohibited and finds a metal box. After what happened, Nodoka takes a bath and a childhood memory comes to her mind where she is happily watching her sister on television, while Sakuta opens the cabinet that May forbade him from opening. 
The next day, the young man returns to his apartment and finds his sister in a school uniform expressing her desire to go back to school, which makes Sasakuba happy. May arrives, also pleased to hear Keeve's words. Later, May gives Sakuta tickets to the concert where she will perform instead of her sister, so both can attend. On the day of Minoka's recording, after much preparation with Sakuta's help, she finally manages to complete the shoot. Despite appearing happy and somewhat relieved, she tells Sakuta that she is angry for taking so long and realizes how challenging it is to be in her sister's place and live under constant pressure. When they arrive at Mei's house, Minoka's mother is waiting for her, asking her to return her daughter. However, in Mei's body, Minoka responds that she hasn't seen her. That same night, Sakuba encounters his father, whom he hasn't seen for a long time, since Keed and his mother fell ill. Finally, the day of Nadoka's performance, in this case, Maze arrives. Both Sakuta and the real Nadoka attend, and they can see their mother in the front row. During the concert, she is amazed by her sister's performance and not only her but also the agency as they choose her as the next central figure in the next song. This causes her mother to tearfully tell her for the first time to be proud. However, the young woman hears and feels sad because it was not her who achieved it, but her sister. As a result, she decides to leave and tries to take her own life, thinking that nobody needs her. However, Sakuta, who was with her at that moment, stops her, telling her that her sister loves her and it will hurt her if she does it. Still, she doesn't believe him, so she asks to return to Mei's house to prove it. Once at Mei's house, Sakuba shows Magoka a metal box containing letters from her that she sent to her sister when they were children and she kept all this time. Behind them is Mei, who thanks her sister for supporting her since childhood and for being her sister. Feeling embarrassed, Nadoka kneels in front of her and says that despite adoring her, she always felt resentment because her mother always got angry with her for not being who she wanted. Mei asks her to make her mother happy, but to choose to be and do what she wants, not what her mother asks for. In an instant, they switch bodies again, returning to normal and ending their puberty syndrome. One morning, Kei is watching a press conference featuring Mei discussing her relationship with Sakuta. She mentions that they met in high school, and their love began when he declared his feelings in front of everyone. Additionally, she requests privacy since he is not a public figure. Inspired by her words, Kei decides to create a list of goals to achieve before the end of the year. On October 15, when Sakuta enters the apartment, he finds a letter from Shoko in his mailbox. Shoko, who hasn't appeared in several days, asks him to meet her at the beach the next day. Before doing anything, he decides to tell Ryo who suggests informing his girlfriend. However, he insists on not telling Mei, as it wouldn't be fair for her to find out he's meeting his first love. Despite this, Ryo sends a message to Mei, who upon learning doesn't confront Sakuba and expresses her own curiosity about the mysterious girl. After classes, both Sakuba and Mei head to the beach to meet Shoko. However, a young girl named Kotomi, a childhood friend of Kid, is waiting for Sakuba. She explains that Kid is doing well and apologizes for not helping her during the- Kotomi reveals that after the- from Kid's sister, began receiving th causing them to stop attending classes. After the conversation, Sakuta goes to the beach where his girlfriend and Shoko were supposed to be. Shoko doesn't appear, so they decide to leave. Before leaving, Sakuta leaves a message in the sand. I have a girlfriend, Sakuta. That night, Kid shows her brother a new list of goals all related to him. They receive a call from Shoko, who confirms that she didn't send any letters and apologizes for her recent absence due to feeling unwell. After dinner, Kiki tells Mei about her list of goals including answering a call that isn't from her brother, and Mei decides to help her. When a phone rings, Kiki answers it with some fear. After successfully answering and feeling happy about it, she f As she sleeps, Sakuta visits her and notices a new bruise on her neck. The next day, after returning from work, Kiki shows her brother a new list of goals, this time related to going outside. She declares that she is ready to face the world, and they slowly begin to achieve each step. Every day, they venture to more distant places until one afternoon when they go to a beach with Mai and Nodoka. Upon arriving, a young girl approaches Kade, claiming to be her old friend. However, Kade denies knowing her, and Sakuta reveals to everyone that his sister lost her memories after the traumatic events she experienced. After what happened at the beach, Sakuta tells Mai and Nodoka that his sister's memory loss began when she was on social media. Following the she experienced a disorder that, due to stress and psychological led to memory loss, causing her not to remember her past life or her own family. Since then, it has been challenging for Sakuta to relate to her as the person he knew was no longer there. This also led to his mother falling ill, as she didn't know how to cope and his father decided to leave to take care of her. One night, Sakuta woke up with a wound on his With no one to believe him, he decided to run away from the hospital where he was, and that's when he met Shoko, the only person who believed him. After confessing the truth about Kade, Sakuta apologizes for not doing it earlier as they were becoming friends. The next day, Mei asks Sakuta to let her know if anything happens because she won't be in town. When Sakuta returns home, he sees his sister in a school uniform again, asking to go back to school. At that moment, he decides to tell her about the girl who appeared on the beach and gives her a book the girl gave him. Upon looking inside, they find a note expressing a desire to be friends again, 
with the girl's name mentioned. However, upon reading it, Kate at the hospital, Sakuta talks to his girlfriend, informing her that Kate is getting better, but there's a possibility that she may recover her memories and lose the last two years of her memory. Cade overhears the conversation. After leaving the hospital while waiting for a taxi, Cade once again asks her brother to let her return to school. On November 19, Sakuna meets with his father again to discuss his sister's request, and his father decides to support him in this decision. After the visit from the social worker, Key tried for several days to go to school but couldn't manage it. Frustrated, bruises began to reappear on her body daily. When Sakuba notices this, he decides to take his sister to the zoo to see the pandas, which were also on her list, to help calm her and reduce her stress. After the visit, it was already sunset, and on their way home, they took a shortcut to arrive faster. She was surprised when she realizes that her brother deceived her so that she could reach school, making it easier for her to attend the next morning. She agrees happily, and upon returning home, she tells him that now she can cross everything off her list as she has fulfilled them. The next morning, Sakuta goes to wake up his sister for school, but she gets up confused. At that moment, he realizes that she is not the sister of the past few years and has apparently regained her memory, having faced all her fears. After realizing that Keed has regained her memory, together with their father, they decide to take her to the hospital, where they are told that she will be kept under observation. Sakuta, upon seeing the sister he cared for over the past two years disappear, goes into crisis. He runs out of the hospital and feeling shattered on the ground, notices how the wounds on his ass return, and at that moment, Shoko appears in front of him. Back at home while he takes a bath, the girl decides to read him his sister's diary, which he had given to her at the time of losing her memory. In it, Keed has been writing down everything she has done since then. She also wrote that she knew this would happen, that one day she would disappear, but the time she spent was happy thanks to her brother. Upon waking up, it's another day and Shoko left him a letter, noting that she had disappeared again. He decides to call Mei to tell her about his sister, and that they will have to reintroduce themselves. That evening at the hospital, Sakuta visits his sister and asks her if she would like to go see pandas, something the previous Keed enjoyed. She responds by telling him to get a girlfriend, and he mentions that he already has one and will introduce her soon. Later, Sakuta decides to go with his friend Ryo to inform her that Keed has regained her memories and that he saw Shoko again. She suggests that Shoko might be a product of his imagination to cope with his issues with his sister, and might not actually exist. At night, Mei, worried about Sakuta, decides to return to the city to be with him but finds Shoko's letter, so she decides to leave and go back to her work. After leaving work, Sakuta encounters Nodoka, who waits for him angrily, and informs him that his sister traveled from afar to see him because she was concerned about him. Not realizing it was his sister's birthday, he goes in search of her. Upon finding her, thanks to Nodoka, they head to a hotel. Their agent gives them some time to talk, during which Sakuta wishes her a happy birthday and apologizes for what he had read. She expresses disappointment in herself for not being there for her boyfriend when he needed her, but he reassures her that her existence is more important. In the following days, Kate learns about her life through her diary from the moment she lost her memory. She also decides to return to school as she has overcome her fears. Three years ago, we meet a younger version of Shoko in the middle of a class. The teacher assigns them to write down their dreams for the future, and while everyone writes nice and hopeful things, the only one who writes nothing and leaves the paper blank is Shoko. Now in the present, we see the younger Shoko with the protagonist bathing a cat. The boy is surprised by the girl's capability and responsibility with the cat, thinking for a moment that her parents must be strict and would refuse to let her keep the cat. Shoko responds by saying that her parents are not as strict as they seem, and she is sure they would allow her to keep the cat. Later that same day after classes, Sakuta is setting the table for dinner with Mei and his sister Kid when suddenly someone knocks on the door. When the protagonist goes to see who it is, he is surprised to find Shoko. However, this is not the Shoko we saw earlier, this is an older teenage version of Shoko. Due to her arrival, both Mei and Kid become a bit uncomfortable. Kid withdraws from the table to avoid getting into any kind of argument, while Mei begins to argue with Shoko due to her arrival. However, after Shoko explains that she came here to stay but won't interfere in Sakuta and Mei's relationship, Mei calms down a bit and accepts her to stay. Despite all this, the problems between these two girls don't end here. The next morning, Sakuta wakes up wanting his girlfriend to give him a good morning kiss. When she refuses, Shoko decides to be the one to give him the good morning kiss. Mei gets angry and stops the girl before she kisses her boyfriend. In the evening of the same day, Sakuta takes his sister to the hospital for a checkup. As he is about to leave, he encounters the younger version of Shoko, and they start chatting. The younger Shoko tells the boy that she hasn't told her parents about the cat yet because she's afraid they will say no since they have already indulged her a lot. Sakuta advises her not to think negatively and asks her to be more grateful, suggesting that it's okay to ask for something, it's what her heart desires. Later at Sakuta's house, he and Mei interrogate the teenage Shoko. Mei starts by asking if she developed puberty syndrome, which the teenage Shoko admits and explains that there are two versions of her, the teenage one they are talking to now and the child version that the protagonist occasionally sees. 
In addition to this, the teenage Shoko reveals that she has a heart condition, so she doesn't think she will live for much longer. After saying all this, both Sakuta and Mei feel sorry for the girl. Together, they decide that she can stay for as long as needed, hoping she can overcome her heart condition. The next day, the protagonist, along with his best friend Ryo, goes to the hospital where the younger Shoko is to better understand the situation that the teenage Shoko is going through. Firstly, the younger Shoko greets Sakuta very excited to see him. After that, she shows them the paper where she was supposed to write her dreams for the future, the same paper from the beginning. But there's something odd about it since she didn't write anything to start with, and now there are several desires to fulfill, although she didn't write them. She asks Sakuta and Ryo for help, mentioning that she doesn't have much hope of living unless she finds someone willing to donate their heart to her. After leaving the younger Shoko's room, Sakuta and Ryo begin to think about how to help her with the heart transplant issue and the fact that her desires are written automatically on the paper. Sakuta recalls something he read from the younger Shoko's wish paper, Marry My Great Love. This leaves Sakuta thinking, so the next day, he tells Mei about it. Without mincing words, Mei tells him that the great love mentioned is probably him. This would explain why the teenage Shoko came to their home in the first place. Although nervous, Sakuta doesn't believe it's true. Later that same day, Sakuta visits the younger Shoko at the hospital. Overjoyed to see him, she asks him to have a Christmas date, to which he agrees only on the condition that she is completely healed, e when she is discharged from the hospital. At night, while Sakuta is sleeping, Mei wakes him up, concerned about his health. She notices that he has a fever, but he only mentions Shoko, which makes Mai angry. Still seeing him sweating due to the fever, she decides to change his shirt. When she she notices huge bruise marks on his which were already there, but now they are larger. Concerned, Sakuta tells her that the wounds started growing when the teenage Shoko appeared in their lives. He worries about this and thinks about what to do to stop the wounds from growing. The next day, while Sakuta talks to Ryo about the peculiar situation with the two Shokos, the teenage Shoko calls the boy to remind him that they had a pending date, so he must go and leave Ryo to handle that issue alone. During the date, they visit various places, Shoko's favorite spots, and end up in a location where a wedding routine is practiced. While practicing a supposed wedding, Sakuta looks at Shoko's and sees a scar. He asks if she found a heart donor, to which she confesses that indeed she did. As a result, her puberty syndrome might disappear. After all this in the evening, Sakuta meets with Ryo to tell her everything. She comes to a quite accurate conclusion. She believes that the teenage Shoko doesn't accept herself as she is and thinks she has no future. Thus, she desperately tries to change her past to become someone and have a better future. Days later, Sakuta visits the younger Shoko to check on her. As soon as he sits down to chat with her, she tells him not to visit her too often because she might lose her life at any moment. The protagonist tells her that he will visit her every day if necessary because he cares about her. He advises her not to be so negative and to think more positively. This causes the girl to start crying, lamenting that she wasn't born healthy like other children and suddenly, she has a arrest and is taken to emergency. Because of this, Sakuta tries to go after her. But at that moment, the wounds on his become much larger and he falls to the ground unconscious due to extreme pain. Obviously, because of this, he is taken to the emergency room as well. After regaining consciousness, Sakuta sees the teenage Shoko next to him, so he tells her about the wounds he has which were caused by her appearance in his life. Mei arrives and Shoko decides to tell him both the truth about these wounds, as well as the truth about the scar on her It turns out that a long time ago, on Christmas Day, her younger self was supposed to meet the protagonist for a date, but an accident occurred that took Sakuta's life. Since Sakuta had organ donation papers with Shoko's name, the hospital owners decided to donate Sakuta's heart to Shoko. Leaving the hospital as Sakuta and Mei head home, Mei tells Sakuta not to abandon her for anything in the world, since they had planned to do many things together, both now and in the future. She also urges him not to stand her up on Christmas Day as she feels that something terrible might happen that day. The day after classes, as Sakuta heads home, he meets Ryo and she tells him she has a bad feeling that something bad might happen to him. He confirms her suspicion, revealing that he will lose his life on Christmas Eve when he goes to see young Shoko. This worries Mei so much that she decides to buy a ticket to go far away with the protagonist as she cannot bear the thought of him risking his life for young Shoko. Sakuna reassures her, saying that whether he lives or not, he will always love her. Nevertheless, he eventually heeds her advice not to play with his life trying to save Shoko in the future. After a few days, the protagonist visits young Shoko at the hospital and sees her in bad condition, fighting for her life. This deeply affects Sakuta, making him reconsider his life for young Shoko. On the day of the scheduled date with young Shoko, Christmas Day, he goes to the bridge where they were supposed to meet. While waiting for the cars to pass, he once again contemplates whether he should himself for Shoko. In the end, he decides to run back home to avoid any catastrophe. However, a car suddenly veers off the road and speeds toward him. Just when it seems like the end for Sakuta, Maya miraculously saves him. Earlier, she had talked to him on the phone and anticipated that he would try to sacrifice himself for young Shoko. So she decided to sacrifice herself for young Shoko instead. Afterward, Mei is taken to the hospital, but the doctors couldn't do much for her, and she is declared 
This sends Sakuba into and he spends days locked in his room. One day, he sees Mei's funeral being broadcast on television, triggering a attack. He runs to the beach and strangely encounters the teenage Shoko. Sakuda asks her how it is possible that she is still alive if he didn't himself for her. Shoko explains that she is alive thanks to Mai as Mai changed her destiny by donating her heart to young Shoko. The teenage Shoko tells the protagonist that if he wants to change fate again and save Mei, he must go back three days before everything happened on December 21. To achieve this, he must take a will make him sleep and travel back in time. However, Shoko warns him that he will wake up completely invisible to everyone, so he needs to find someone who can see him, just like Mei did at the beginning of the story. Thus, they go back three days before December 24. Sakuda, wearing a pink bear costume, tries to make people notice him. After a long time, he succeeds in getting someone to see him, and that person is none other than Tomo. Once he has Tomo's attention, he convinces her to do what he asks. Firstly, he asks her to call the Sakuda from that timeline to tell him not to himself for young Shoko, but the boy refuses and hangs up. For this reason, the original Sakuda decides to go with Ryo to get permission to enter the dressing room of that timeline's Mei. Once inside, he asks her not to risk her life of the Sakuda of that timeline. Although she initially refuses because she loves him so much that she would rather lose her life than see him lose his, she eventually agrees because she enjoys pleasing her boyfriend. Later, the original Sakuda reunites with the teenage Shoko and he apologizes for not saving her and for letting Mei save herself for him. She reassures him, knowing that everything will be fine now as they are about to complete the plan to save both Mei and himself. After this conversation, the original protagonist is himself to save himself. In the present, Sakuda is alive and well, seeing that the one who was hit by the car was his past self, meaning he managed to save himself and Mei, restoring everything to normal. The next day, Sakuda visits young Shoko at the hospital and sees that she is still unwell. It seems that she not only failed to find a donor, but also that her puberty syndrome persists, even after everything the protagonist did. In a strange turn of events to save Shoko, Sakuda must start his life over from the moment before meeting all his friends. He mentions this to Mai, and despite her tears as she cannot bear him not knowing her anymore, she ultimately agrees all to save Shoko. Thus time goes back, and although Sakuda in this new timeline doesn't know anyone, he quickly befriends all of his friends again and gradually reconnects with Mai, although they don't fully know each other yet. After some time, they become a couple again, and on one of their outings, they see a poster for a movie starring Mei. The film is about a girl who needs the help of an organ donor, and thanks to this movie, young Shoko finally found a donor. Once young Shoko fully recovers, it is evident that she can now write something on her wish paper, as she now has a future and wants to make the most of it. In a small dream Sakuda has, he manages to see a younger version of his girlfriend, Mei, standing on the shore of a beach. The young Mei asks the protagonist who he is, and before he can respond, the dream abruptly ends as Sakuda wakes up. Several days later, we see Sakuda returning home with the actual Mei. This is no longer a dream but reality. They walk and talk, revealing that Mei is about to graduate, soon entering university. Similarly, Sakuda has little time left to finish his last year of high school. Since he plans to attend the same university as Mei, he decides to put in final effort in his last year. On the other hand, the protagonist's sister has to do the same. Having been absent from school in recent weeks, she needs to make an effort to finish the academic year well, especially since she wants to attend the same school as her brother next year. This leads to a serious discussion among her, her parents, and Sakuda about which school to enroll her in after finishing high school. Despite the difficulty of entering Sakuda's school and considering her recent academic decline due to her absence, she insists on wanting to attend his school. Sakuda advises her to put in a lot of effort since getting into that school is challenging, especially after her academic performance dropped in the past weeks. Despite this, Kay decides to study very hard to try to enter the same school as her brother with him assisting her. However, realizing the challenges, Sakuda attends a distant school conference a few days later, thinking it's the best option for his sister. When he returns home after this secret visit, he finds Mei there, who apparently came to help Keed. However, Keed, exhausted from studying, fell asleep, and together with Sakuda, they headed to her room to talk. In her room, Mei seriously asks Sakuda where he had gone, expressing her concern. He truthfully explains that he went to see which other school his sister could attend. Relieved, Mei is glad that her boyfriend cares so much about his sister's mental health, thinking about a school where she can attend without having to interact with people too much. The next day, while Sakuda is in class, he decides to leave for a moment to ask the school's secretary if his sister submitted her application. The secretary informs him that no one came to submit an application, causing Sakuta to worry. As he leaves the school to look for his sister, he finds her just meters from the entrance, soaked in rain and with a lost look, unable to enter the school due to her social anxiety. Despite this, she managed to submit her application and Sakuta feels content that she accomplished this. He congratulates her and strokes her hair, but he notices something strange in his hand. Taking her hand, he realizes that the puberty syndrome has returned. 
Feeling unwell, she lies down on the floor and explains that she feels bad because she is unsure if she will pass the entrance exams. Sakuta comforts her, saying that everything will be fine and that he will support her regardless of whether she passes the exams or not. Thanks to these words, she calms down and feels relieved, spending the next few days studying intensively. On the day of the exams, Sakuta prepares something delicious for his sister to eat, ensuring she arrives at the school with energy and a full stomach. Later, he accompanies her to the train station, saying goodbye and asking her to give her best effort. Back home, while Sakuta is doing some school tasks, he receives a call and rushes to the school. The call was from the school, informing him that Ki had an incident and had to be taken to the infirmary. Once Sakuta arrives at the school and goes to the infirmary, he finds his sister covered up to her head, facing away. When he talks to her, she recounts what happened. Her day at school started well. She did well on the exams. However, during a break, she had an eye contact encounter with another girl in the hallway, which made her nervous. This triggered her fear and rejection of people, causing her not to return to the classroom and end up in the infirmary. In addition to this, Ki confesses to her brother that she feels very bad about something specific. She hates herself because she misses her former self. She even feels that everyone, including her brother, prefers the younger Ki over the current one. And this thought torments her second by second. After these words, Sakuta feels his sister's pain and for a moment, it seems like his heart shatters. Following this, he goes to Ki's classroom to gather her things. In doing so, he finds Ki's diary, but it turns out to be the diary of the younger Ki. Upon opening and reading it, he realizes that the desire to attend the same school belongs to the younger Keed, not the one he knows. That's why his present sister has been trying so hard to enter the same school. To all this, Sakuta comes up with an idea to make his sister attend a different school other than his. He knows that she doesn't want to, and she's just trying to fulfill the younger Keed's wish. The idea is to make his sister talk to Naboka, who is considering studying at the distant school that Sakuta secretly visited. Days later, Sakuta takes his sister to a concert featuring Nadoka and her friends. There, he tells Keed that one of the singers plans to study at a distant school. Afterward, he delivers a heartfelt speech, encouraging her to pursue her own dreams rather than trying to fulfill the dreams of her past self for the sake of others. He expresses his love for both the past and present Keed, urging her to be herself. These words bring Keed to tears, feeling relieved and comforted by her brother's beautiful words. Later, the two siblings meet Nabdoka and her group. While traveling in a car, Nabdoka explains what it's like to stop going to a regular school and attend a distant school. She elaborates on the benefits such as not having to leave home or make physical contact with unfamiliar people. Afterward, the four teenagers leave the car and head to the beach, continuing to discuss the distant school. At that moment, Nabdoka tells Keed to follow her own dreams and not someone else's because her happiness depends on who she is now, not who she once was. As a result of this conversation, Kate finally understands everything thanks to Nadoka's words and those of her brother. The next day, she is finally able to accept herself as she is and overcome her traumas related to her past self. To top it off, she can now decide what to do with her academic future. Her decision is based on choosing which distant school to attend, wanting to start doing things for herself. Weeks later, the time comes for May's high school graduation. To celebrate, May asks Sakuta to wait for her at the beach, as she will meet him there after the graduation ceremony. When Sakuta goes to the beach after classes, he waits for his girlfriend. Suddenly, he sees May appearing out of nowhere, but as a young version of herself. Intrigued, he approaches her to figure out what is happening. When she turns to look at him, she asks him the same question that started everything. Who are you?